Welcome to the School of Motion Graphics. My name is CM De La Vega, and today's tutorial is magical. And that's because we'll be using Mocha's Pro Remove feature to automatically and digitally erase someone from the shot. It's pretty amazing what this plugin can do. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and let's jump right into this tutorial. Let's import our footage. Hit Control I, select your footage, hit import. I will double click to open in the layer panel. Let me zoom out and let's scrub through. Now we have this action scene that's going, that's going on on the right side of the footage. And here on the left side, we have this young lady in red that walks right into our shot. Now in the past, we might have to do another take, but now it's not necessary because Mocha has this amazing feature, the remove feature, that when you set up a couple of parameters, it will automatically remove anything you want in your footage. It's pretty amazing. And for this tutorial, we're gonna set it up to allow Mocha to automatically erase this young lady from the shot. Now grab your footage, click and drag to the composition icon. It'll create a comp, the same resolution, same frame rate as your footage. Make sure you have your layer selected. And in the past, you would go to animation track in Mocha AE to open up Mocha. Now, this is a light version that comes bundled for free inside of After Effects. It does not contain this amazing remove feature. It's only available in the professional version. It's worth getting the professional version of Mocha just for this remove feature. Now, if you do have it, go to Effect and go to Mocha and go to Mocha Pro. Now, to launch the plugin, click on this button. And it loads our clip. Now there's two basic things that we need to set up. Number one is we need to track the object that we want to remove, in this case, this young lady. And number two is we need to track the area that contains the object that we want to remove. And if we zoom in, we can see that we need to track part of the street. We need to track, we need to track part of this wall and part of this background. Let's start out with step number one and to track this young lady. And let's choose a good frame to start. Let's go to frame 75. We're going to draw a shape around her. So click on the X-Spline tool and loosely draw a shape around her. And to close this shape, we're going to right click. We can adjust these points. And down in track, we're only interested right now in the translation. So let's deselect these and let's track forward. Click on this button. Now, let's make some manual adjustments. Let's bring these points down. And you might notice that she's casting a shadow over here. We can remove the shadow, but it will add a level of complexity to this tutorial. We want to keep it as simple as possible. And for this clip, we're probably going to end this clip right around here before she enters into this little area of light. So it's okay. But we'll track all the way to the end nonetheless. So let's go back to the frame where we started tracking. And from this point to the beginning, we're, we're going to track backwards. Click on this button. Okay, so the tracker got a little bit lost, but that's okay, no problem. What we're gonna do is we're, we're going to right click, go to selection, select all in spline, and let's move it here. We're gonna manually put some keyframes. And let's see, right around here again. And let's just make sure that, let's move it again. Let's just make sure that she's completely inside the shape. So you can see here her, her feet is a little bit outside. So we're going to move this and we're setting keyframes. Every little green diamond is a keyframe. So let's make sure she's inside. Maybe around here we can make it a little bit wider. Okay, let me move this over so you can see. She goes in, pay attention to her feet right here. She goes in right here. So around frame, right now it's 22, 21, 20. We're going to set the end point of this layer at frame 20. So select the end point. The end point is right here. So we're gonna click here. So anything below frame 20, we will not use. So we can go to 20, and like I said, we can go all the way up to here, and we can set an out point, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just track all the way to the end. 
Now, let's rename this layer girl. And I will change the color. We'll have multiple layers. And to make it easy to illustrate different concepts, I will change the color for you. Now, this little gear icon, it tells Mocha to track. And you can see the track tools, the track controls are enabled. And if we click on it, it turns it off and it disable tracking. This is good practice once you're done tracking a layer to turn it off. And we click on this button. You can see the mat. And this is the area that we're going to tell Mocha, hey, whatever is inside of this area, we want you to remove. So that's step number one. I'm going to hide this layer. I'll click this button and hide this layer. Let's go to step number two. And step number two is to track the area that contains the object that we want to remove. And Mocha is a planar tracking software. That means that it works by tracking planes. And if you remember anything from high school geometry, a plane is simply a 2D surface that extends in infinity. So keep that in mind for step number two when you're tracking the area that contains the object that you want to remove. For this example, it's pretty easy. A plane is this whole alley. The street is a plane. This back wall is a plane. This background is a plane. There's more planes, you know, there's this wall right here, this wall right here, but we don't need to track that. We only need to track the area where she's walking. So let's, let's start out by creating this, the plane for the street. Click on the X spline and let's click, let's click. And to close it, once again, right click. Now, I'm not tracking this area because the car is moving in this area. And it could cause confusion if we track any of this area. So we're only going to keep it to this part of the street. Now, you see we have rounded corners. And what we can do is we can pull the blue handles to make it straight. Or we can right click, go to selection, select all and spline. And then simply it will pull up all of them. Let's line it up, let's line it up. And down in track, let's bump this up to 90. And for motion, let's put perspective as well. And let's call this street. I'm gonna change the color to green. Let's zoom in and let's create the second area. And it's this back wall. Go back to the X spline click I'm going to do four points and right click to close it and right click on any of these points go to selection select all and let's pull it out now we want to perfectly snap this edge to this edge and in order to do this we're going to click on this join tool and it'll snap the vertex and it'll join these two shapes this is very important to use a join you don't want to do it by eye you don't want to overlap because if you do it might cause confusion and the remove feature may not work properly so let's align, let's align this to the wall. And let's track perspective and let's call this wall. Let's change the color to orange. And last, let's track this background. So let's do one, two, three, four. I'm going to do five. Right click to close it. And I'm going to right click again. I'm going to select all and pull it out. And once again, let's snap these edges together using this join tool. Perfect. Go back to the arrow tool. And here, we're only going to translate the top three translation, scale, and rotation. So let's deselect shear. And let's call this BG for background. Let's make it blue. Perfect. Now let's select this button so you can see we have the background, the wall, and the street. Let's use a surface tool. And let's enable the surface tool. And I'm dragging the handles. Let's click the grid tool now. And using the surface tool and the grid, Let's line it up to the street. We're using the surface tool and we're using the grid to help us double check and verify we have a good track after we're done with tracking. So let's go to the wall. We'll do the same thing, but we'll line it up with the same perspective as a wall.
click on the grid tool and that looks like it's lined up okay now before we begin to track we need to do something it's very important that we track everything that is in green minus the shape of the girl and remember the shape of the girl is this this pink shape that we created for her the reason behind this is it could cause confusion when we're tracking and there's some movement inside this area so we want to subtract this area from the green and the same thing for the wall we want to subtract this this little area from the wall and the same thing for the background the easiest way to do it to create this holdout mat is to simply select the layer of the object that you want to remove and place it first in the layer order if we do this and we go back to illustrate go to selected track mats now we go to the street you can see that it's subtracted since the girl the object that we want to remove is first in the layer order anything below it it'll, it'll create this this holdout mat so it'll subtract that area from every single layer beneath it so you can see the background is subtracting this area the wall is subtracting this area and the street is subtracting this area now if we had it the other way around it wouldn't work so the trick is to grab the layer of the object that you want to remove and place it first in the layer order and the second thing is the layers closest to the camera are on top of the layer stack and those farthest away from the camera are the layers lowest in the order stack so what we want to do is the background is the layer all the way back so let's bring it all the way to the bottom and the wall is somewhere in the in the middle and we're gonna put the street here so once again anything that is closest to the camera we're gonna put that layer on top and anything that is farthest away from the camera we're gonna put it towards the bottom and I think we're ready to track and let's go ahead and click the track forward it's going to take a while, so let's fast forward. Now let's go back to the frame where we started and let's track backwards. And once again, I'm going to fast forward. Okay, there might be some confusion. You see right here, there's this little area that we didn't cover. And we'll see if this caused any confusion. You see this 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 purple the shape it's overlapping some of these areas but I think it should be fine we'll check now let's let's turn off the tracking for these layers and let's go to the layer of the object that we want to remove in this case the girl and what we want to do is we want to create a feather a nice feather around this mat now the way to do it is to go to the edge width and select right click and go to selection select on spline and it selects all the points and we can click on the plus and every plus will will increase by by three pixels so if we do it again it'll be six and we do it again it'll be nine now the only thing is it's only doing it for this one frame so if we go back and scrub you can see that it's only doing it for this one frame now let me take out the feather now to set it across all the frames we'll be using the uber key let's turn on the uber key and let's set the feather now if we scrub across you can see that it set this feather across all of our frames perfect so we can turn off the uber the uber key and make sure that your girl layer is selected the object that you want to remove is selected go down to the remove tab now input you can create a clean plate which you can go to photoshop do some cloning and bring it back and help mocha to to do the remove and we'll do that in part two and in search range pretty much you can leave these values by default the very important thing is the step step of one means that is using every single frame to do the remove now if you have a very long clip for example a thousand two thousand frames you might want to step it up to 10 15 frames which means that every 10 or 15 frames it will analyze and and do the remove for illumination model start off with none and none doesn't do anything with illumination linear will adjust the hue and the saturation to match the lighting of your footage and interpolate is one step further than linear it will do the hue and the saturation along with the gradient now I would start out with none if that doesn't work you can try linear if that doesn't work well you can try interpolate but know that linear and interpolate will increase your render time so we're gonna select none for now 
we're ready to allow Mocha to do its magic. All we need to do is click on this gear icon to render out this frame. And Mocha will use all the parameters that we gave it to do the remove. And there you have it. It's looking pretty good. Now, it only rendered out one frame. If we go forward, it'll say frame 76 not rendered in clip. What we need to do is we need to click this button to render all the frames forward to the end and this button to render all the frames backwards. So let's see, let's click some frames. What you can do after you're rendered, you can go to File, Export, Rendered Clip, but there's a better way to do it. What I would do is I would save this project, I would close it, go back to After Effects, and where it says Module Renders, check Render, go to Module, and go to Remove. And all that work that you did inside of Mocha, After Effects will read it, and it will do the render inside of After Effects. Pretty cool. Let's do a RAM preview. And the good thing about this is that you can add effects to this clip. You can do some color correction and obviously do the remove and just render it one time straight out of After Effects. I will fast forward this RAM preview because it's going to take a while. And once it's done, I will show it to you. Okay, so it's done rendering. And you can see that it's pretty amazing. It's a handheld shot and Mocha was able to automatically remove the girl from the shot. Let me, let's make it full screen so you can see it. It's pretty amazing. Now there's one thing, there's this guy in the background that got in the shot right here. Now in part two, I'm gonna show you how to use a clean plate to also remove this guy all the way in the background. And it's pretty simple to do. That'll be part two. Amigos, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something new. Now, if you want to get started in the field of motion graphics, make some money, definitely check out the book that I wrote. It's available on Amazon. I put a link to the book in the description below. There's a quote by Albert Einstein that I really like, and he says, there are two ways to live your life. One, as though nothing is a miracle, and the other, as though everything is a miracle. Life is truly a miracle, so make it count.